Welcome to People Power in Politics. Hard talk, riveting interviews, community updates, in depth analysis. That's People Power in Politics. We tell it to you as it is. No holds barred. You are the people, you have the power. We bring you the politics. To listen to our podcast, be a guest, or to advertise, visit www.pppradio.nyc. That's www.pppradio.nyc. A bipartisan bill that would revamp New York's 175-year-old wrongful death statute was swiftly vetoed by Governor Kathy Hochul not once, but twice. Under the current 175-year-old law, Families can only cite economic hardship caused rather than damages caused by pain and suffering. New York State Trial Lawyers Association President David Scheer joins us to discuss the Grieving Families Act. Welcome, sir. It's good to have you with us. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. It's good to be here. A pleasure. So, what is the Grieving Families Act and how is it set to expand compensable damages in wrongful death actions vastly? So the Grieving Families Act would update and amend New York State's current wrongful death law. And just for some perspective, the current wrongful death law was enacted in 1847 and hasn't been changed since. What the Grieving Families Act would do, it would allow the close family members who have suffered a death to recover compensation for their grief and anguish as a result of the loss of a loved one. The current outdated statute does not allow for any sort of emotional recovery. So a jury, even if it wanted to, couldn't consider the emotional pain and anguish and grief, for example, of a grieving parent who has lost a child or a grieving child who has lost a parent. The current law only allows for recovery of what are known as pecuniary damages. And what that really boils down to is, sadly, under current New York state law, as far as the civil justice system is concerned, a life really is only worth how much money the person was earning. And as you can imagine, the results of that are often perverse. The way it plays out under the current law, which we're trying to change, is If someone who is a high earner dies, well, then that case is worth a lot. And that wrongdoer who caused the death will be held accountable. But on the other hand, if the victim was a child or a retired person or a disabled person or an unemployed person or a low wage earner, that death under the current law is virtually worthless. So this law seeks to change that. Excellent. So... Will the act take effect immediately upon signing by the governor, and will it, re- and will it ret- retroactively apply to pending cases? The way that the current bill is written, the bill would be retroactive, and there is a three-year statute of limitation in the current version of the bill, which means essentially that whenever the bill is signed into law, it would go back approximately three years and cover any death that occurred during that period of time. That's how the current bill is drafted. Okay, so what areas can a plaintiff claim compensation based upon the Grieving Families Act? So if the Grieving Families Act is passed into law, then a family in a lawsuit could attempt to recover compensation for their grief. And again, under the current law, that is simply not allowed. So if the Grieving Families Act were to be passed, you know, for example, uh, we know, sadly, that the numbers of just, for example, of black women who are dying during childbirth is on the rise right now. And we know that's particularly been a problem um, in New York City of recent. And we have spoken with families of those sorts of victims. These are healthy young women who go in to give birth. Uh, They have a C-section, and they don't go home with their babies. It's tragic. And in many of those cases, as the current law stands, even if the hospital was responsible for the death, even if the hospital clearly committed malpractice in those types of cases, there would be no real accountability. There would be no financial penalty to the hospital if the woman who died wasn't a high-wage earner. So this bill would fix that problem, and I hope 
anyone who hears my voice right now would agree that that is, in fact, a problem. It would fix the problem by allowing close family members, for example, the husband who's left behind, other children who are left behind, to go to court and get some compensation for the grief and pain of losing a loved one. So that's really what it's about. It's about grief and anguish. It's about recognizing that those things have real value. It's about aligning the law with our actual values as New Yorkers. And respectfully, the current version drafted you know, before the Civil War just doesn't actually reflect our values. Okay, so most opposed to the measure are small businesses and insurance and healthcare companies. They argue it will drive up costs, lead to bankruptcy, and put corporate profits over patient safety. What are your thoughts? Well, first of all, we, as supporters of the bill, don't want to see anyone go bankrupt. Uh, We care about all New Yorkers, including those who are operating businesses and hospitals. Uh, The good news is this bill has been studied from an economic impact standpoint over and over and over again. It's really been scrutinized over a period of years, including by um, independent forensic actuaries. And the bottom line is this. If passed into law, it will have a tiny, minuscule impact as far as macroeconomically on the state. That's because as tragic and horrible as these cases are, they are, frankly, few and far between when compared to all tort cases, all injury and medical malpractice cases filed. Statistically speaking, wrongful death cases represent well under 1% of all injury cases. So this law wouldn't be capable of toppling an economy. It just applies to too few cases. Also, what we point to is this wouldn't be the first state to pass such a law. In fact, 48 of the 50 states allow some recovery for grief already and are doing just fine. And one good example is Illinois. Illinois passed a similar law several years ago, allowing recovery for grief. And opponents of the bill in Illinois made the same cries and complaints and predictions. They said, if you pass this law, Illinois, hospitals will shut down, insurance premiums will go up, and people won't be able to do business. Well, Illinois passed the law, and guess what happened since then? Insurance premiums actually went down. So we have examples from other states. We know that this law is laser targeted on only a very select few of the most tragic cases. And by the way, it's only aimed at actors who kill people. So if you're running a business that's negligently killing people, well, maybe you should be worried about this law. But I would suggest respectfully, as New Yorkers, we should care more about hospitals and businesses trying harder not to kill people. And that's what this law would accomplish. Exactly. So tell us about the New York State Trial Lawyers Association and how this organization is involved. Sure. So the New York State Trial Lawyers Association, I'm currently serving out my one-year term as president, but I've been involved for a long time. It's a bar association, and it's comprised of attorney members all throughout New York State. There's thousands of members who represent victims, victims of accidents. It could be an auto accident. It could be a premises accident. It could be medical malpractice. It could be construction. But that's what our lawyer members do. And we do several things as a bar organization. One of the things that we do is work and fight to make sure that the laws in New York are as strong as they can be to protect people on the consumer level, to protect victims, to make sure that when they're hurt, they have their day in court. They have the ability to seek fair compensation if, in fact, they were negligently hurt um, and to Uh, prevent laws from being passed that would be contrary to that goal. So we always have our eye on what's happening in Albany, looking to protect victims, looking to make our laws more fair and more equitable. And in this case, we, and we're not alone, by the way, I would like to point out, if I might, that, you know, this law is broadly supported. And when I say this law, I should say this bill because it's not law yet. The Grieving Families Act is was rather uh, passed through the New York State Assembly and Senate two years in a row, almost unanimously. So just to repeat that, almost every Democrat, almost every Republican lawmaker in the entire state 
agrees that the wrongful uh, that the Grieving Families Act should become law. Uh, we also have a broad group of uh, coalition of supporters, including groups like the NAACP, who recognize that the current law has a deeply unfair impact on people who have been historically disadvantaged. Because if you're a group that historically earns less than other groups, then under the current law, your life is worth less. And that is absolutely unacceptable. The AARP, for example, supports the law. Why? Because, again, if you're a retired person whose life is negligently taken, under the current law, your life is worth nothing or next to nothing. Also, in the healthcare industry, and some folks who claim to represent the healthcare industry, uh, who make millions of dollars a year, have come out in opposition to this bill. But the Nurses Association, the Union of Nurses in New York State, and there are tens of thousands of members. They've come out. They've come out in strong support of the bill, and they wrote a letter to Governor Hochul, asking her to sign it. So, I would like to um, make it clear to you and to your listeners, this is not a quote-unquote trial lawyers bill. You know, this is a bill that enjoys broad support from Republicans and Democrats, from all sorts of groups, from gun safety groups, who are mortified, for example that the top shooting in Buffalo, that those victims' lives would be worthless under the current law, um, all the way across the board to organized labor groups who have come out in strong support and said so publicly. Really, this is down to Governor Kathy Hochul, who's vetoed the bill twice and now is going to have an opportunity to do the right thing this year. So given all what you've said, all that broad support for the Grieving Families Act, what can the public do to encourage and to pressure the governor to put ink to paper and pass this, this um, act immediately? Yeah, thank you for that question. I think the best thing to do is publicly support the bill to the extent that you can. Um, talk to your representatives, write letters, get on social media, share stories. You know, sadly, there are many sad stories of bereaved families who have lost loved ones. And those folks really deserve the respect of the governor's time and attention. Um, many of those grieving families have tried to get the governor's attention, um, have written letters, have held press conferences, have gone on social media. And I just think more and more of that is required to really show that there is a human element of suffering here. There are real people, everyday New Yorkers all over the state, who are being denied justice. And the more those stories are told and shared and made public, and the more the governor is aware of them, my hope would be is that she would sign this law. Thank you so very much. Thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity, and thank you for what you're doing. Our pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care. People power in politics. Hard talk, riveting interviews, community updates, in-depth analysis. That's people power in politics. We tell it to you as it is. No holds barred. You are the people. You have the power. We bring you the politics. To listen to our show, be a guest, or to advertise, visit www.pppradio.nyc. That's www.pppradio.nyc.